Welcome and thank you for tuning in to the Connection Point. I am Kelly Wallace, Director of Operations at the Triangle East Chamber of Commerce. And today we are excited to have Chris Johnson, who is the Director of the Johnston County Economic Development. Um, so we are just here to get to know him a little bit better. Um, Chris and I have known each other for many years, um, but many of you may not know him and the work of his office. So welcome, Chris. I'm glad to have you here. Thank you very much, Kelly, for the opportunity and, and to the Triangle East team and uh, being able to uh, tell the Joko story. Great. Um, well, we'll just kind of jump into the fun stuff a little bit um, just to get to know you a little bit. Um, where are you originally from? Okay, well, I can uh, take it from there. I'm, I'm originally from Northampton County. Uh, I met my wife at East Carolina. I've uh, been living in Johnston County. Uh, yeah, go Pirates. I've been uh, living in Johnston County since 1990 uh, when we got married. I, I tell everybody I was not blessed enough to be born in Johnston County, but smart enough to marry someone that was from Johnston County. And so... Uh, uh, this has been home ever since. Uh, I've been living here for uh, for well over close to 30 years now. Uh, I have two uh, two kids. Both of them go to East Carolina as well. Uh, I've never really lived any more than five miles uh, west of I-95. So Eastern North Carolina is in my DNA. Uh, I've got uh, you know kind of a heart for the uh, for for Eastern North Carolina, and so uh, thoroughly enjoy Johnston County and and what I do. Um, after moving to Johnston County, kind of bounced around uh, within some careers and was very fortunate uh, in the late 90s uh, to be asked to serve as the economic developer and Main Street manager for the town of Smithfield and thoroughly enjoyed that. I uh, did that for 13, 14 years um, and kind of was really able to cut my teeth in economic development on Main Street. Uh, and so from there, was able to transition now seven years in this position. I still feel like I'm kind of, everybody kind of refers to me as the new economic developer for Johnston County, but that's been over seven years. So uh, um, there's a lot more gray hair in, uh, in my head uh, than when I started, but uh, I feel like I've, uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed, not feel like I've, I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, my tenure here. Wow. And look forward to continue serving the, uh, the residents of, of Johnston County. Great. Um, wow. It yeah. is hard to believe that you've been there seven years. Um, and I yeah, can appreciate, yeah. I can appreciate being a transplant to uh, Johnston County in the Triangle East region. Uh, I am too a uh, transplant. So, um, and it, it is home now. This is home. So yeah, I can when appreciate I moved here in 1990, the population was 75, 80,000 uh, people. Uh, and now, you know, we have a population of over, uh, 212. So uh, our community has, uh, has changed dramatically uh, because of uh, the growth of the triangle. And obviously, Johnston County is a, is a key, key component and key player in that. And so uh, we're kind of muscling our way up to the table. Uh, obviously, uh, like many of the halo counties around the triangle, uh, uh, you know, you think of the urban core, uh, but Johnston County is, is making a name for itself, and uh, I'm very proud of that. Sure. Well, um, when you're not drumming up business for Johnston County, what do you like to do in your downtime or off time well, for fun? Yeah, well, on a personal thing, I mean, obviously, uh, my, uh, my wife and I own a small business. Um, uh, we've been in, in business now for uh, almost 30 years, uh, Jules Formal downtown. And so that keeps me busy post, uh, you know, before COVID hit, obviously that has kind of thrown a, a wrinkle in the retail sector. Uh, but then, uh, you know, I enjoy cycling. Uh, uh, there's a group of us in, in Johnston County that get together three and four times a, a week. I missed it this morning. It was too cold. They like, some people like to cycle in 30 degree weather. I, I don't. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we tend to ride anywhere between 30 to 50 miles uh, a ride every time. So uh, it, that's kind of uh, what releases all this pent-up energy and, and stuff like that. And so uh, I, I, I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, getting into cycling and been doing that uh, probably about uh, 12, 13 years. And uh, so uh, that 
that's that's kind of my hobby. Some people play golf, some people fish, some people do stuff. I like to get on a bicycle and just just ride for uh, for hours. So that's well, more power way. to you. <laughs> <laughs> no um, pun intended there. It's all self power. That's for sure. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the work of the Economic Development Office. Um, you know, some people may not really know what your office does. So kind of give us a little synopsis of, of what you, you're doing, uh, just kind of on a daily basis and the role that it plays in our um, economy. Well, it, it, thank you for asking that because it, I, as, as I was thinking about that, and, you know, when we were kind of lining up the, the, this, this discussion of, of how do you explain to people what you do? Uh, some people understand it. Some people, you know, like the economic developer, what is, what is that? Um, I, I jokingly say it's kind of a glorified cheerleader. Uh, I'm, I'm here to, 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 to cheer on and, and, and sell the county, uh, look for opportunities uh, that are out there, showcase those opportunities, um, and, you know, explain why, uh, growing a business here in Johnston County makes sense, whether it's a, a business or industry. Uh, I'm, you know, going back to my, my, my retail and small business experience, it's, it's all about relationships. So whether you're a, a small business, uh, you know, with a half a million dollar sales annually or a, a large corporation with half a billion dollar sales, at the end of the day, it's about delivering promises and, 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 and making, making sure that, that that entity makes a dollar a day. Um, because if you're not making money, obviously uh, you don't need to be in business or you can't stay in business. And so uh, I try to just apply those same principles from small business to, you know, if, if again, the retail or small business sector is about customers, delivering product, making sure that you turn a profit, making payroll, keeping the lights on, all the things that, that go into there is, is the same principles, whether you're a small retail or a large pharmaceutical. And it's, you know, making sure that products are delivered to, to, the, to the entity uh, and then sold and, and processed and, and, and such. So um, I feel like um, the office has been very successful because of, of applying those principles. And, Obviously, um, working for a, a county that has strong leadership and, and stable leadership uh, is, is, is healthy and it makes my job a whole lot easier. Uh, when, I, when I think of, I mean, obviously people can change the roles, uh, elected officials, you know, transition out, uh, but the philosophy kind of still remains the same. Uh, it makes my job a whole lot easier, which is pro-growth. Um, you know, green tape, not red tape philosophy. Um, how can we be pro-business? And so uh, uh, it's, again, it just makes my job a whole lot easier. But in a nutshell, basically I, I get out and sell the county and that can be uh, meeting clients here in Johnston County that has heard about it, you know, receiving phone calls or actually getting on the road and, and, and meeting with site consultants, meeting with companies. Uh, yeah, not a lot of travel. Uh, you know, some people really travel a lot. Um, and we, we do a, a fair amount, but really not a lot. Obviously, we go to trade shows and we, we call on consultants, uh, you know, in the Atlanta market, uh, in Nashville, uh, the Greenville, Spartanburg area. There's a lot of consultants there, mm -hmm. some in New York. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's getting out and kind of marketing yourself to the, uh, to the world. And that can be both the internet, you know, just, you know, just that personal conversation, that personal relationship. And, you know, because uh, what I try to do is make sure, I mean, site consultants in particular want to be successful and they want to make sure that, because they're representing the client. Obviously, I want to sell Johnson County. I would love to have them here. Uh, I'd love to have every one of them here, but there's certain deliverables that have to be met by the county and, you know, in my role is not necessarily to hide those things, uh, is to really kind of identify, you know, how we can meet the client's needs at the end of the day. And if we can't, I'll be the first one to say, hey, look, we've got, 
here's our weaknesses, but here's how we can solve those weaknesses. Because the last thing I want to do is, is, you know, bring in a client. We have, you know, we, 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 we had announced a project. We're at a ribbon cutting ceremony. All of a sudden, there's a big problem. And that doesn't bode well for the, for the site consultant. It certainly doesn't bode well for the county because, you know, rumors like that tend to permeate throughout the, the site consultant world of, of both, you know, the, you know, when things go wrong. And uh, I'd much rather, um, you know, I'd much rather identify those issues and work with the consultant of how we can solve them if we can. And if not, then, you know, then there'll, there'll be more opportunities coming down the pipeline, especially where we are. I mean, uh, goodness gracious, we've got all so, the amenities. Yeah, yeah. I, did, I was wanted to ask, you know, what what are those unique qualities about Johnston County that make it a great place for someone to um, bring their business? Well, I mean, right behind me, I, you, you can't see my pen. Well, there's my finger. I mean, it, it is it is it is I ninety five right there, mm -hmm. and I forty, and um, I'm backwards here. But anyway, the point is, is that I've got this map up, and that's that's the real selling point is where we are, our transportation connectivity, um, our close proximity to the triangle. Uh, you know, we're one of the few counties that will will soon have three interstate highways crossing the county with both I ninety five and I-40, but with the transition of US-70 to I-42. So we'll, we'll be, I mean, transportation connectivity is the biggest selling point. And then the close proximity to the three major universities, to Raleigh, the Research Triangle Park, and RDU. And uh, one of the exciting things about Johnson County is the Southern Loop, the I-540 uh, Southern Loop, which has been on the drawing boards for 20 plus years and it's finally you know uh six or seven well post covid you know it, it, the construction started and we're monitoring that monthly with drone video uh, footage and and you know celebrating that because that just gets us 10 to 15 minutes everybody wherever you are in johnson county you're now 10 to 15 minutes closer to all the selling points that made johnson county attractive before we're that much more uh, attractive now because uh, of the, the 540 Southern Loop. But then also, the you know, they're widening 40 uh, from four lane to six lane. So we're going to have multiple opportunities to get to get market to, to, uh, to, to the customer or the consumer or employees. I mean, it's just making us that much closer to, uh, to what's already is a, is a blessing for Johnson County. Yeah, great. Yes, definitely. We have we are very blessed to have the connections um, that we do. Um, can you talk a little bit about the workforce that uh, Johnston County has? Well, I mean, you know, obviously we've got a great working relationship with our, our traditional uh, K twelve uh, school system and developing that pipeline. Obviously, we are we're always needing to uh, look for ways to improve it. Um, and then, you know, the great working relationship with Dr. Johnson and Joy Callahan and their whole team over at, the, over at JCC. Um, you know, the, the, the collaboration between our office, the community college, the county commissioners, um, and, and, you know, in the establishing the Workforce Development Center. I mean, it is a huge, huge uh, feather in our cap. Uh, I take every every client that uh, that comes in, particularly life science. Uh, we make sure that we take them by the workforce development center, and and see the commitment to worker training, both for new employees coming into the pipeline or, or in the, that are in the pipeline, but also existing uh, employees that are at our industry. So the, the customized training and things that we're able to offer here in Johnson County now. Everybody sells at community college. I get that, but uh, you know, I think we probably have one of the better ones in the state um, because of, of what we've been able to do here locally. And it's a testimony to, to like I said, our, our political and our public side leadership, but then also the private side because uh, when you have uh, entities like Caterpillar, Griffles, Novo, you, you name it, Cisco, uh, everybody along the I-95 corridor. Uh, it's, 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 it's all hands on deck when it comes uh, to, to labor because uh, in, a, in, in many projects, I mean, you know, it comes down to talent. Even before uh, COVID hit us, talent was number one. Now that COVID is 
quarantine or in the midst of it or however it's going to shake out, uh, talent still rises to the top. And, uh, and so making sure that, uh, you know, because one, you know, what's your unemployment rate? What are, you know, where's my talent going to come from? Uh, and then that's when it's, uh, it's easy to sell the triangle region, but then also talk about our interstate connectivity and say, well, they may not be living in Johnson County, but when you tie in Wayne, Wilson, Harnett, Sampson, you know, and, and, and the connectivity, uh, with the interstates, uh, you know, when you say it's a mile a minute, you can literally, you can, you can draw from a, a bigger uh, pool of, of, of individuals than just what's in your neighborhood. Yeah, we are blessed. We do have great uh, partnerships with our education systems. And um, you're right, talent is uh, a top priority for businesses. Um, um, and I know, you know, COVID has really kind of um, made all of us think about how we do business, um, you know, and even created new opportunities. Do you see any um, anything new on the horizon uh, that Johnston County could position itself for? Well, all the things that I mentioned before, I mean, we're going to be very attractive to the research, you know, with, with COVID, uh, there's been a huge national push of of you know, the reshoring of manufacturing. It's gonna be interesting to see now that today, I don't know when this is gonna be posted, but today is election day. So we'll see how everything shakes out that and how that continues. But uh, I think that, you know, obviously uh, the, 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 uh, the new trade agreements between Mexico and, and Canada and the US, uh, the reshoring or the, you know, and companies realize that they need to make sure that uh, they've got on demand deliverables and that that things are uh, you know that that pipeline of uh, of, of product uh, supply chain is there and that uh, that, um, that they, they need to make sure that they have a lot of product on hand so that if there is a disruption that they don't have to completely shut down for six months or whatever that time period is that they can still uh, limp along because they've got uh, proper supply chain uh, contacts. So, you know, working with our ports and, and uh, it's, it's the, the key thing for Johnston County now is, is, is having product, um, both land, but then also buildings. And that's something that we've been woefully behind um, here in Johnston County because we just don't have a lot of product, building product. And uh, so it's, it's, it's a testimony to our leadership is aware of it, county leadership. We're, we're working on ideas uh, that, that we can address those or partner. Uh, I think a lot of communities have gotten into the spec building themselves, you know, government uh, or, or, or community entities building stuff, parts, and I don't think that's a direction uh, I see our office and the leadership going, but figuring out how they can partner with the private sector so that government is not competing with the private sector. And so but how can how can we partner with them uh, to reduce exposure and to get product on the ground? Uh, because businesses are looking for, you know, time to market. They want to make sure that they, they want to see a building and they say, okay, I can be in that building in 60 to 90 days. So how can we shorten that time? And so we're addressing it on that end with the building, but then also uh, we're also addressing it on the land side as well, uh, because there's some projects that, that you know, are so specialized, they're just looking for 50 acres of land or 100 acres of land. So um, we're working, you know, we'll work with any property owner uh, that, uh, that is willing to, to work with the county in my office and to market their their property uh, you know have great working relationship with all of our uh, commercial brokers um, around Johnston County um, we, again we don't need to be competing against each other but how can we partner with each other is, is the key thing uh, it's all about relationships it's all about partnership and um, and you know identifying those sites getting them site ready whether it's you know, going to do the due diligence uh, getting rezoned uh, making sure infrastructure is in place, uh, and you know, kind of identifying where is great areas to to grow. Uh, you know, the I ninety five corridor is something that obviously, and then you know, making sure that there's a good balance between uh, our farming community, our home building community, 
and our in, in, you know in our traditional industry um, that, uh, that that's out there uh, because it, it has to have a balance, and you want to make sure that you have proper spacing and bug good buffering and and uh, and, and planning uh, for the future. Obviously, that uh, as the triangle continues to grow and with the school systems that we have and the close proximity. You know, uh, there's a lot of people moving to the Triangle region, and then Johnston County rises to the top because of all the, the things that we, the, the same things that industry look for, families look for. So okay. uh, it's finding that balance. Um, well, that's the toughest challenge, if you want to call it a challenge. But, uh, can you um, you talk about having uh, you know property site ready? What does that really mean? Uh, well, site ready means it's just reducing the time. You know, time is money. Uh, and it's a it sends a message to the consultants or to the client that the due diligence has already been done, so they don't have to go in and go through the process of having it, um, you know, having the geotech, the soil borings. All the, it kind of removes all the questions about a site. So if a client knows that it's already been zoned light industrial, they don't have to wait 60 days to go through that process. Um, you know, that there's the wetlands have been identified. So, yes, we can put, you know, a 200,000 square foot building on this site because the wetlands have been identified and, and we can we can make that sure that that fits. Uh, the, you know, the geotechnical, the historical, we won't be out there digging around and all of a sudden find something uh, of historical nature that would only slow down the process. Um, you know, we've identified where the water and sewer allotments are, where natural gas is, where data can come in from. So all the things that, uh, you know, if you think about a company spending a hundred million dollars, if, if whoever's listening to this, you know, what would you need to have to make sure that when you're making that huge investment, that it's not going to slow up that process because time is money. So it's a, it's a checklist of about 32, 33 things. And, and making sure that those things are identified. Uh, and it's just kind of an assurance so that yes, they realize that. And then one of the key things uh, for a certified site is that it's a set price, that it, the property owner is, is an agreement to sell, and this is what uh, the, the family or he or she wants for that, for that land. Because uh, too often, um, you know, we, we all want to get, we all want to make as much as we possibly can on, on any property. I, I understand that, but there's this thought process out there that, well, you know, if it's such and such, I'll sell it to them for $25,000 $20, an acre. But wait a minute, you mean it's such and such? And, 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 and individuals think, well, since it's, it's Corporation XYZ, well, they've got billions, they may be willing to spend $100,000, which that's not the case. We're all, we're competing with multiple sites within the state, within the region, but then also uh, across the U.S. and sometimes globally. So everything kind of lines up and says, okay, well, you know, we're competing with a site in Texas. Well, what's Texas's land going for? Uh, you know, have they got all this, you know, stuff done? So we're trying to making sure that, you know, that whenever uh, the client narrows us down, because when a Typically what happens is that when a client sends something out of a site consultant, they'll send it out to hundreds of communities that fit within that, that model. And it's the site consultant's role to take that hundred to reduce it down to 10. And anything that they can look for that can eliminate, I mean, they're in the process of elimination. So if they can eliminate 90, they've done their job. And then once they get it down to 10, that's when they start fine tuning and start comparing tax rates, water sewer rates, electrical rates, all the things that go into making a business. You know, do you have enough labor? Do you have all these other things? And that's when it starts, I hate to say getting competitive, but that's when it start, the rubber starts hitting the road. And, and any of those 32 things or uh, any of the things that they, they're looking for reasons to eliminate you. And that's not anything negative. It's just they're trying to figure out where the weak spots are for the community, right. and then at the end of the day, get it, getting it down to two or three sites, and uh, and then then it's just a matter of what the client wants. Well, and I, 
you know, incentives do play a, a huge role in that. Um, and I think one incentive that Johnson County has are the opportunity zones. Um, mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about what that is and what that uh, means for a business. Sure thing. Um, the the opportunity zone is uh, basically um, it's under the uh, the tax plan that was established in 2017, and it was actually uh, uh, across both party lines. Uh, you know, obviously uh, President Trump pushed this, but then also Senator Cory Booker uh, out of New Jersey uh, was kind of behind this, and and um, we we have and it's based on census tracts. It's not anything that we carved out, it's all based on census tracts, but we were able to to, uh, uh, to get four census tracts there. And basically what happens is that um, any um, project that goes there, um, it's, it, it's very favorable when it comes to capital gains. Uh, so uh, traditionally, let's just say hypothetically, if you go out and build a, a $100 million uh, company on in, a, in an area and 10 years from now you sell it for 200 million then you have to you know the pay, pay the capital gains on the the, 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 the new investment or the, the, the gain um, but uh, with opportunity zones uh, they're trying to direct them to, to areas that need assistance uh, or need assistance with growth and so what happens is that if the, whatever the new investment is or the new gain would be, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, I hate to say tax-free from a capital gains standpoint, it, it's, uh, it's very favorable. Um, so we've been, we were very uh, fortunate that, that when the, that we had 19 eligible, believe it or not, census tracts in Johnston County and and all 19 probably were well deserved in, uh, of the designation, but we could only uh, recommend four. We submitted seven, but uh, four were selected. And we went through a process of, of, of identifying and, and ranking those, uh, those tracks based on whether or not previous investment had occurred, uh, whether or not there was interstate connectivity or four lane connectivity whether or not water and sewer actually existed or kind of was in the, in the area, did it have natural gas? We went, you know, did we have certified sites within the zone? So we went through a selection process that made sense. And so we just didn't arbitrarily pick a census tract that didn't have any of those things that chances are, even if you gave them the land, a client wouldn't go there because it just didn't make good business sense. Uh, so we kind of ranked ours, and, and we're very fortunate that uh, uh, I think we came out with uh, with four good tracks. Obviously, the you know number five and number six were equally as great, but and number seven too. But uh, you know we just couldn't pick. They just they just didn't allow us to 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 uh, to get before. So right. Well, Johnson County is poised for uh, growth, and uh, we're excited about um, what's to come. Um, anything else you'd like to share with folks uh, watching today about, uh, you know, what you do, projects that might be coming that you could share or? Well, uh, yeah, sure thing. I can, I can say this. The office has just been, uh, been as busy as ever before, even during COVID. Obviously, uh, we've done a lot more of these types of uh, interactions as opposed to face-to-face. We've I think we've all become uh, proficient in Zoom or whatever social media platform that you that you <laughs> that you meet with today. But uh, we've had several uh, we've had several client visits both uh, uh, over the internet, but then also believe it or not, face to face. So Johnston County is is continuing to get good looks, um, and so uh, we're, I'm excited about the the future. Uh, what uh, what we have to offer. I can't think of a better community uh, in, in, in the Triangle region in the state uh, than what we've got here. Uh, again, great working relationships with our Chambers of Commerce, uh, Triangle East. Uh, you know, we've, we're, we're continuing to brand ourselves, to market ourselves. We're, we're getting ready to um, uh, there's getting ready to be a publication in the Triangle Business Journal uh about uh, about johnston county um you know 
I guess my, my, my takeaway of the things, you know, when I give a presentation and talk about how close we are to the Triangle region and that we're not out there, we're not on the other side of the world, uh, that we're really uh, part of the Triangle and we're, we're the part of the Raleigh MSA, we're the third largest county in the Triangle region right behind Wake and Durham. Uh, so we're holding our own. And, uh, and I talk about the six cylinders of economic development and, and, and how they're all important. And whether it's travel and tourism, a medical, home building, agricultural, uh, a manufacturing, small business, you name it, uh, they're all key. And, and education is the, is the, the gas that, that makes that six cylinder engine run. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's a team effort. Uh, it's, you know, I, I sometimes, uh, tend to get more credit than, uh, than I deserve. Uh, and it's just because I'm fortunate enough to be sitting in this, this seat, but it's, it's definitely, it's definitely a team effort. It starts with our leadership, uh, both at the, the county as well as our community level and then our small business and our, and our uh, civic organizations and everything that makes Johnson County great. You're right. And, uh, we're proud to uh, partner with you and, um, Look forward to the great things to come to Johnston County. Um, it's all about connections, and here we are at the connection point. So um, I appreciate uh, you being with us today and uh, getting to know you a little bit better. And if folks want, need to reach out to you, um, where do they need to go? They can uh, obviously go to our website at growwithjoco.com, which is also uh, our hashtag that we, we use a lot. Uh, uh, grow with Joko, and uh, so uh, it's uh, that's that's where you can find us and uh, learn more about the office. Look at available properties uh, and connect with us. So I look forward. And also, everybody's either on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. You, everybody, I mean, you know that that's the key thing is is that uh, using every platform possible to get the message out, not only to our our internal marketing for just the residents of Johnson County, but beyond. Great. Well, thanks again, Chris, for being with us. And thank you to all who've tuned in today. Make it a great week.